Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Today we're going to be talking about the gift of hospitality. And, uh, you know, the, we've been studying on the 19 gifts of the Holy Spirit. And so, look with me at uh, uh, 1 Peter 4, 9 through 10. 1 Peter 4, 9 through 10. It says, use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man hath received the gift. You get that? As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Verse 9 is simply saying, Glad, gladly open up your homes and welcome each other as guests. Get, guests, not gifts, as guests. This is especially true towards those who need a meal or a room to stay. And I remember back years ago, we was over in the old building. My wife, the kids and I, was Maria, I'm not sure if Mark was with us or not. He, he might have been. He was a teenager at the time. But anyway, we uh, took another family in our church here, and we went out to the Navajo Reservation out, out in uh, New Mexico. And anyway, the, the missionary out there, he had us all scheduled to, to preach, and then had it all set up. When we got there, uh, he wouldn't give us a place to stay. And there was no motels close by. And uh, they had a nice, big, double-wide trailer for their church belt. He wouldn't even let us stay in there. He said, no, no, the Indians might get the wrong idea. They might want to stay in there. I, I can't have that. And so he had us sleeping in these tents beside this old, beside this old dusty road that trucks were coming in and going out because they were building new hogans for the Indian tribes there. And all that dust was just getting all over us. It's in our hair and all over our clothes. And so anyway, on Saturday, I talked to this other fellow that was with us, and I said, you know, we need, we just need to get out of here, and go to a motel, get cleaned up, and go on our way. And so anyway, I went and told the missionary, and he said, oh, you can't leave, you can't leave. He said, I got you scheduled to preach tomorrow. And I said, I'm sorry, we're, we're so covered with dirt. We don't have a place to shower. We don't have a place to clean up. And so, we just hauled out. And you know that he he shouldn't have done that. And if he'd have, if he'd have been following the scriptures, he wouldn't have done that. But you know, there's there's people that, people in the ministry that just don't read or understand the word of God. Yeah. Now you know, as hosts, we're to do this without complaining or without uh, 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 feeling like we're being inconvenienced. And you know, missionaries oftentimes are treated good, but sometimes not so good. And you know, we've had we've had some bad experiences, and I'm sure this missionary here had too, Brother Tom. And we know what it is to be out there, and I think there's a lot of pastors out there that ought to uh, they ought to be on the on the road for a year, and then on the mission field for a year, and they don't understand about what a missionary has to put up with. But anyway, I'm going to ask Sister Lisa, please read for us Matthew. 25 verses 34 through 40. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was this hungry, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when, when saw we thee and hunger and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. Think about that. The way we treat others is the same as treating them, the same as treating the Lord that way. We treat them good, the same as treating the Lord that way. We treat them bad, the same as treating the Lord that way. And now, what is hospitality? Well, hospitality comes from the English word hospital. And going back centuries ago, Religious leaders established guest houses in the 5th century, and these were called hospice, meaning a place for guests. 
And these places were set up to where a minister coming into that place could eat all the food that he wanted. He could stay all night and never have to pay anything. And I remember the story about a Catholic priest who came to one of those places and he came in and he came in and he was using bad language and he sat down and he ordered a big meal and, and a big bottle of wine. He sat there and he gorged himself and then he drank about half of that bottle of wine, got about half drunk and he staggered up the stairs to his room and he fell on the bed and he slept there and snored all night, kept keeping everybody else awake and came back down and ate a big breakfast and getting ready to leave and the proprietor handed him a bill. He said, oh, no, no, I don't, I don't have to pay. I don't have to pay. And the proprietor said, listen, when you came in here yesterday evening, he said, you talked like a sinner. Then he said, you ate like a sinner. You drank like a sinner. You got drunk like a sinner. You slept like a sinner. This morning you ate breakfast like a sinner. And now he said, sir, you will pay like a sinner. And you know, people like that, they ought to have to pay. They shouldn't, they shouldn't even call themselves a minister and go to those Catholic priests, they call themselves a father. <coughs> father? They're not my father. My father is in heaven. You know, my heavenly father. But anyway, <coughs> in the word of God, all believers are, are exhorted to give themselves to hospitality. This is a command. Romans 12, verse 12 through 13 says, Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer without delay, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. You know, there was a missionary who went to a church back years ago, and he preached, and there was a hillbilly family there in the church, and an old hillbilly asked the guy if he'd like to come home and have dinner with them, and so he said, yeah, I'll do that. So he went home, and the woman put the food on the table and they said prayer and they thank God for the food and sat down and started eating. This big old dog of the farmer, he was sitting there close to the table looking at this missionary staring at him with a low, low grumble. You know, and the big dogs would do. And anyway, the, the missionary looked at the old farmer and he said, how come your dog keeps growling at me and staring at me? And old Hill really said, well, you growl and stare too if somebody's eating out of your plate. Oh, you know, missionaries had to put up a lot of things, you know, and uh, <laughs> we've been through some experiences. But anyway, in God's word, elders are required to be lovers of hospitality. Now, what is an elder? A lot of confusion about what an elder is. An elder has to do with a pastor's person. A bishop has to do with his office. And, uh, you know, I remember a church out in Omak, Washington, just off of the reservation where we were for 35 years. And they called themselves a Baptist church, but it was all controlled by a group of men called themselves elders. They told the preacher why they could preach, when he could preach, and how long he could preach. They're totally unscriptural. They didn't even know what they were doing. God called elders are to be lovers of hospitality. Caleb, would you please read for us 1 Timothy 3 and verse 2. A bishop man must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigil, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality as he pleases. Thank you, Sister Caleb. Now, Sister Rachel, please read for us Titus 1 verses 7 and 8. For a bishop must be Thank you, Sister Rachel. And you know, we were at a church in, in uh, Hartford, Connecticut. And uh, we got there, and the, the pastor, he was a young man who walked around his snoot there. You know, if it had rained, he'd, he'd probably drown. But uh, anyway, you know, he had some men working, working out there around the church building. A big church building, big complex, but very few people. And so I was, uh, they had a shop, and there was a man working on a vehicle. I walked in, got to talking to him, found out he was a missionary. I said, how long have you been around here? He said, oh, about six months. He said, the pastor told me if I'd stay here for a year and work for him, he'd take us on for support. 
Anyway, another young man was riding a bronco, riding a, a lawnmower. And I stopped him, got to talk to him, found out he was a missionary, and he gave me the same story. So we just hooked up and went. You know, I figured that guy, he's just using missionaries, and uh, he don't have any intention to support them. And, and you know, I'll tell you what, I don't know if that young man's still in the ministry or not, but he ought to get out of the ministry. Now, in exercising hospitality, some have entertained angels without knowing it. You know, I'm going to ask uh, Brother John, please read for us Hebrews 13, verses 1 and 2. Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Now, you know, in Genesis 18, we see where Abraham entertained angels. Now, do you think that could happen today? I think it could. You know, and we, you know, we don't know uh, what an angel. You know, I, I think an angel, if we entertain them in unawares, they're not going to look like an angel. They're going to look like a regular human being. Now, the gift of hospitality is that supernatural ability to provide open house and warm welcome for those in need of food and clothing. It seems that more women have this gift than men. I'm going to ask Sister Deborah, please read for us 2 Kings 4, 8 through 10. And it fell on a day that Elisha passed between them where was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as often he passed by, he turned in hither to eat bread. And now, and she said unto her husband, Behold, now I perceive that this is an holy man of God, which passeth by us continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set him, set for him there a bed, and a table, and a stool, and a candlestick, and it shall be when he cometh to us that he shall turn in hither. So you see, Women certainly have the gift of hospitality. And you know, uh, some churches have prophets' chambers, just like it's described right here. And that's a blessing to a missionary and his family that's traveling if they don't have a, a, a tribal trailer or something like that to live in. And so, you know, secondly, we see the need for hospitality. In the New Testament times, there was a great need for hospitality among believers because of the many preachers and travels spreading the word of God. Also because there was much persecution in those days. You know, there were no holiday inns, there were no Howard Johnsons, Hiltons, or Sheridans, and no Motel Sixes or Super Eights. There just wasn't any. Now, the gift of hospitality is still needed today. There's lonely people in a lot of churches. I remember back when I pastored this church, we had some a lot of single students that came to our church, members of our church. But on a Sunday afternoon, they'd eat over there at the, on the campus and they'd just lay around in their apartments, you know, nothing to do. So we started a, a program in our church where we would adopt two or three of those young people. And each family in the church did that. We'd invite them every Sunday to come home and eat with us and spend the afternoon with us and uh, we helped them out in that way and that, well, that was really encur an encouragement to them and so you know the gift of hospitality is still needed today there's evangelists, missionaries who travel about and uh, you know I've been in some churches that we, we got treated just like royalty I remember <coughs> Church in Lindale, Texas. I'd never been there before. We got there and the pastor came out with a big smile and, and then he uh, told us where to hook our trailer up and everything and, and we had a mission department right beside the, where we parked the trailer. And he said, now would you folks mind just staying in our mission department? I said, uh, we can do that. It's gonna cause us a lot of work. I said, we have to transfer everything out of our trailer over to there. And he said, well, I don't want you to have to do that. I said, would you just promise me you'll take a shower in there? And I said, sure, we'll do that. And then he told me, he said, that little grocery store across the street, you go over and buy anything you want to eat and you sign the ticket, we got an account there. He said, then 
He said, if you want to take your family out and eat, go down here to the main street, go down there to the left, turn left, go down to a brandy's restaurant. He said, we got an account down there. Go down there and buy anything you want and sign that ticket. Now, that church supported us for years, still supporting us today. And, you know, uh, I thank God for churches like that. Now, there are always those that need help. In the old days, there was a great need. There's still a great need today. There's a curse upon those who refuse to receive God's servants. Mark 6, 10 and 11, it says, And he said unto them, In what place soever ye enter into a house, there abide until ye depart from that place. And whosoever shall not receive you nor hear you when ye depart thence, shake off the dust under your feet for a testimony against them. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. I was told that back several years ago, there was a young pastor in his family that moved to a town, I think it was in South Dakota, and they went there to start a church. There was no churches in that town. And anyway, they rented a house that was furnished, and they uh, uh, started witnessing to the landlady, and she got angry at him. She said, I, here, I want to take, I want to give you your money back. I want you to just move out. He said, no, I'm not going to move out. We've already paid you for a month. And they said, we're going to stay here. So they started knocking doors. They got cussed out. They got the door slammed in their faces. And, and anyway, the whole town got together and they marched on the, on the house. And they all standing outside, you know, and, and they demanded that he pack his family up and get out of there. They gave him a half an hour. And so they packed their vehicle up and, and they, they, and the people all went with them out to the city limits and said, now, get on down the road and don't you ever come back. And this young missionary got out of his car, young preacher, whatever he was, a preacher or missionary. But anyway, he got out and he stomped his feet. He said, I wiped the dust off of my feet as a testimony against you. He said, you people have rejected, you haven't rejected me, you have rejected Jesus Christ. And he went on his way the very next day. I was told an F5 twister came through there and tore that town to bits. Nothing left. A lot of people died. So, you know, people don't realize who they're messing with when they do stuff like that. Thirdly, we see examples of hospitality. Anyone who has this gift knows that when to engage their guest in conversation and when to let them meditate by themselves. They should be made to feel at home. And you know, it's it's not good to have a missionary in your home and then just uh, uh, keep them so involved in conversation that they're not able to read their Bible or to pray or to meditate on the Word of God. So we need to be mindful of that. And... Uh, you know, our Lord could always find hospitality in the home of Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. Now, I'm going to ask Brother Edgar, please read for us Luke 10, 38 through 42. Now it came to pass, as they went, he entered into a city, into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at, feet, at Jesus' feet and her <coughs> But Martha was covered about much, uh, with much, uh, yeah, much serving, yeah, much serving, and came uh, to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath uh, left me to serve alone? I bid her, therefore, that she help me. Now I'm going to ask Sister Natasha, please read for us John 11, verses 1, 1 and 2. John 11, 1 and 2. Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Thank you, Natasha. Now, if we had to make a choice between which of these women had the gift, which one would you think had the gift of hospitality? Huh? I think Mary had it. Martha's questionable. Because, you know, Martha, notice it says Martha was cumbered. 
she was burdened, she was distressed. She was a complainer. That's yeah. what she was. She was a complainer. Now, she had the gift. She wasn't using it in the right way. Also, we see that Peter lodged many days in Joppa with Simon the Tanner, and then also he lodged with one by the name of Cornelius. Beverly, would you please read for us Acts 9 and verse 43? Thank you, Beverly. Now, as we look at Acts chapter 10, look at verse 25 and 26. It says, As Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. And verse 48 says, And he commanded them to be baptized. In the name of the Lord, and then pray they him to tarry certain days. They were using hospitality towards Peter. And then, then we saw see that Paul found much hospitality among believers. Lydia, the Philippian jailer, Phoebe, Gaius, and these all were extending hospitality towards the apostle Paul. False teachers are not to receive hospitality from Christians. False teachers such as Mormon missionaries, Kingdom Hall people. You know, when they, when they oh brother, uh, I'm, I'm going to ask uh, Sister Shirley, please read for us 2 John 10 and 11. If there are any Come unto you and bring not this doctrine, receiving not into your house. Neither bid him God speak. For he that bid him God speak is partaker of the evil evil. <clears throat> it's true. So we don't let them in your house. And I, you know, when one of them comes, comes to my door, like the Kingdom Hall people, they come to my door, I grab my Bible and three to five cards. And uh, I let them talk for a little bit. And I ask them, I say, uh, who do you think Jesus Christ is? They always say, well, he's the son of God. I say, do you believe he is God in perfect human flesh? They'll say, oh, no, no, he's the son of God. I say, okay, I've got a scripture I want you to read. And I cover up the bottom part of Isaiah 9 and verse 6. I say, now read this part right here. They say, well, let me read all of it. I say, just wait a minute, just read this first part. And it says, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. I said, Now who's that talking about? And I never have it fail. They always say, Well, it's talking about Jesus. I said, Are you sure? Yeah, that's yeah, talking about Jesus. I said, Okay, read the rest. It says, And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And you know what they'll say? I said, Well, we got to go. We got some other calls we got to make. Boy, they'll hit the trail. But you see, don't let them in your house. Then we see, fourthly, the blessing of hospitality. The recipient receives blessings. True believers are blessed as they receive hospitality from other Christians. And we should never take advantage of those that are showing us hospitality. Don't go in and demand certain kind of food, whatever they set before you, just thank God for it. Either. Even if it's Arab food or even if it's Italian food. I don't know, any of those kind of foods that, that I hate. You know, when, I, when we'd go to somebody's house and they had it sitting before us, I would try to eat it. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I tried. I really did. And, uh, but anyway, uh, you know, sometimes unsaved people are brought to Christ through the use of this gift. Out on the reservation, I worked on a lot of vehicles for Indians. And this young man by the name of Chris Campus, he rode a bicycle everywhere, but he didn't have a vehicle. His grandpa died and left him an old 85 Chevrolet pickup. Every week, I'd have to work on that thing. And I replaced the carburetor kit, put a new carburetor kit in it, and I replaced the, the water pump, replaced the power steering pump. And uh, uh, numerous things that we had to do to that thing. But he got to be a good friend. He still calls me every once in a while. 
And so, you know, and I've done great work for different individuals there on the reservation. They gave me an opportunity to witness to them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when you're working for them and uh, they don't know how to work on the vehicle, they're going to listen to you because they don't want you to quit working on their vehicle. But anyway, also, the host receives blessings. We're never to use this gift with the wrong motives, like, well, I want to be paid back. We should do it without having a desire to be paid back. And I'm going to ask Brother Norwood, please read for us Luke 14, verses 12 through 14. <coughs> Luke 14 verse 12 says <clears throat> Then said he also to him that bade him when thou makest a dinner or a supper call not thy friends nor thy brethren neither thy kinsmen nor thy rich neighbors lest they also bid thee again and a recompense be made thee when thou makest a feast call the poor the man, the lame blind, and thou shalt be blessed, for thou cannot, <clears throat> cannot recompense, they cannot recompense thee, for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. Yeah, thank you, Brother Norwood. Now, even though this is true, God always rewards us. Now, what I'm about to quote from Scripture has to do with the gift of giving. We'll be talking about that next week. But anyway, Luke 6, 38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, taken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet, with all that shall be measured to you again. God says he's going to use men to give it back to us. And you know, in Proverbs 19, verse 17, very interesting scripture. He that hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord. And that which he hath given, will he, Christ, pay him again. We give the poor to the poor the same as giving it to the Lord. And the Lord says, I'm going to pay you back. And you know, I found that to be true in my life. Every time I give something to somebody that really needs help, God always gives me back more than what I gave to that person. In Matthew 25, verse 40, in closing, it says, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. So we need to always keep that in mind. You know, whatever we do to another Christian, whether it be good or bad, it's the same as doing it unto the Lord. So we need to be careful that we treat other Christians in a godly manner. Amen? All right. We're going to wrap it up and get ready for our church services this morning. And uh, so anyway, I'm going, to, I'm going to ask Brother John to please dismiss us in prayer this morning, if you would, please.